Hey everybody, Mike here from Cool Dad Reviews. Today we are going to take a look at how to change the oil and filter on a CBR. This specific model is a 2015 CBRA. It's got the ABS. It's the fared version. The other versions of the Honda 300cc class bikes is the CB. They don't have fairings. And the difference between the two bikes is going to be where the oil filter is kept. As you can see here, this is covered behind the lower fairing and we will need to take that out in order to change out the filter. Some of the tools you're going to need today is a flashlight, a socket wrench, uh, a snub nose screwdriver, something short so you can pry something away, and the socket set. There are Allen keys that come with the kit underneath, underneath the seat, but we are using um, some sockets because it's just easier to take out some of the screws. You will need the Allen key to get to a hidden bolt which is hidden behind the center fairing and we'll show you how to do that. The oil filter is a K&N oil filter I ordered from Amazon and the it's supposed to be high performance I'm not sure if that's the case or not but it will do the job and that again came from Amazon and of course the oil the 10W40 will be using it calls for 10W30 that said the temperature and the climate you're in will dictate what kind of oil you can use this four stroke oil is fine as the Castrol and pick up from any of your automotive stores. And of course, last but not least, the manual. The manual will give you some insight on what parts to remove and how to torque your bolts as well as uh, where the cowling bolts are so you can take it apart. So the first thing we're going to have to do is take out the fairing. Actually, we're not going to take out the fairing we're going to just loosen the fairings, the top, middle, and bottom, so that we can access a bolt that's hidden behind the lower fairing that allows you to take it out so you can access the oil filter, which is right there, hidden away behind the cowl or the fairing. So in order to get to it, we're gonna have to pull it apart. Um, as you can see, there's the top fairing and the top fairing has three or four bolts that connect it as well as a couple plastic clips that will require popping out. It's not a hard job, it's just a job that sort of has to be done methodically. You don't want to crack or break the plastic. It's an expensive repair and that's the last thing you want to do, especially on a bike that has decals or stickers on it. So what we'll do is we'll start, is start to pull out the bolts from the middle and top fairing so that we can remove the entire lower fairing, the shiny part there, so we can access the oil filter. Uh, that's probably the hardest part of the job. The rest of it seems to be pretty simple. Uh, it's just, again, making sure that we don't crack the fairing or the lower part that joins the right and left side at the bottom together, again, if it's which we'll show you in a little bit um, as the video progresses. Okay, so as you can see, the Allen key that comes with the bike is what you'll need to take out the bolts that connect the, fa the fairings. There's three types of fairing bolts. There's A, B, and C. One has a rubber gasket, the other one has a spacer, and the other one's just a flat uh, round bolt. Uh, you'll need to take out all three of those. Make sure you remember where goes where so that you don't put the wrong bolt into the wrong fairing and you'll get some vibration if it's done not done right the first time. So what we've done is we've added the same size Allen key or Allen wrench to a socket set and that just makes for easy removal rather than using the Allen key itself. Uh, but again the Allen key is fine so if you don't have a socket set or uh, the tool like this one you can go ahead and use the one that came with the bike not a problem. So we'll start by removing the obvious bolt. That's the front fairing. As you can see, this has a rubber seal 
around it. Just remember, again, that one came from the corner bearing. See, it's still not quite as loose as we want it to be. There's still several more bolts to take out. There's the one at the top. And that's the second type of bolt, as you can see. So one has the rubber gasket. The other one is just a plain bolt. And again, you just have to remember what goes where in the opposite order when you do put the fairing back together again when you're finished your oil change. So next, there's the lower bolt. Again, just a quick turnout. And that's type C. That's the other type of bolt. I'm not sure if it's type C, but that's the other the third type of bolt that you'll have on the fairings. So just remember the three types of bolts and make sure they go into the same holes. Now, if we look under the bike, there's another bolt that needs to be removed, and that's for the top part of the fairing. And that comes out quite easily as well. And as you can see, that's uh, another kind of bolt there. Now, if we come around, we'll take a look underneath there's another bolt that comes in from the inside of the bike. That'll have to come out as well. Now again, most of these bolts are very accessible. It's just that one bolt that's hidden behind or in between the fairings that is a little bit tough to get to. So there's that part done. Now, in the middle, there's a plastic push clip. You push the center of the clip, that will push in a plastic holder or screw holder, and just pry that out and it should come out quite easily. And that holds the two fairings from the right to the left side. On the inside, there are clips that will need to be unclipped so the rest of the pieces can separate from each other. There's also a bolt in the center that needs to come out. <clears throat> now, this part is a little bit tricky. It's a little bit tough to get to, so you sort of have to go on your back and look in. So as you can see, there are some plastic clips that lock into each other. Those will need to be removed. The best way to do that is to use a snub-nosed tool or a flat screwdriver if you can get it in there. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to lift the tabs away from each other and it should just snap apart. You might have to apply a little bit of pressure. It won't break, but you'll need to apply that pressure in order for the two pieces to separate. Now, as we swing down to the bottom of the bike, there's the bottom bolt that will need to come out that connects the two right and left lower fairing together. Now, 
And I'm not sure if you can see that, but that's where the screw goes into. And as you take out the screw, the clips will be open and available to be unfastened. Now, like I said, you'll need to use a flat screwdriver or some sort of snub nose tool to get into the plastic tabs to punch them out. And it does take a little bit of pressure, but it will come out. Sorry, forgot to take out the screw. There we go. Now, you just have to get in there and pull the tab. Like I said, it's giving us a little bit of trouble, but it'll come out. Just need a little bit of light. Thank you. And as you can see there, the plier, or not the plier, the screwdriver is pulling out the tab, and bingo. You can see the two parts are now free from each other, which is exactly what we wanted. So with the bottom part loose and the upper fairing unscrewed, we should be able to pull back the top fairing and get to that bolt right back there that you couldn't otherwise get to because they were all tied in so tightly. And that's why we had to take out the lower cowls and I keep calling it cowls, the lower fairing and the top so that we can pull it back to access that bolt. Now the nice thing about the unfaired version is the oil filter is easily accessible so you don't have to go through this step with an unfaired bike. And there is one more plastic push bolt that's up here that we need to remove. Forgot to take that out and that will fully loosen the fairing. Now if you wanted to pull this whole thing out you will have to undo the clips but like I said you don't need to take out the entire fairing you just need to loosen it enough to get to that hidden bolt. Now to remove that bolt this is where the allen key comes in handy. The ratchet set doesn't quite reach in there so the allen key can quite easily get in catch the bolt and we can take it out. And there it is. Again, remember what bolt goes where. Oh, one more. So now that that final bolt is out, we can wiggle the lower fairing off. There we go. I should clean that off and bingo we got access to the oil filter now if you're doing a straight oil change you don't need to take out the fairing you can access the drain bolt uh, right from under the bike so you don't need to do this process of removing the fairings or loosening the fairings but on the CBR fared version if you want to do the oil change and the filter change you do have to at least take out the lower fairing the reason why I'm doing an oil filter change this time is I already gave it an oil change in the fall. It is now July of the following year and I want to give it a nice clean 
oil change with a new filter as part of the regular maintenance of the bike. You want to make sure it's running right. Now, I do want to take a couple of moments here to talk about the lower fairing. This gave us the most trouble, and I think it'll give a lot of other people the same trouble. So now that we have it open, I think it's a good idea to take a look and see how it actually connects so that when you want to take it apart again, or if you want to put it back together, you are sort of in the know on where the pieces are and what goes where. So as you can see, there's all the female and male tabs connected to the one side of the fairing. And when you hold up the other side, they line up with each other. So there's the female side and they lock in sort of like your hands clasped together and the center there's the circle that has to line up with a metal rod there so that the screw can go in from the bottom and actually thread in and hold it together. So we're going to start the bike, let it run for about four or five minutes so that the oil's hot before we change it. Don't start the bike first until you, after you've taken off the fairings because you will be touching the pipes in the underbelly of the bike and you know you don't want to hurt yourself. So the parts that you're going to need is well obviously a drain pan we're using an old paint can there but the oil filter which we showed earlier on it's a KN112 which is needed for this model bike and a flashlight a funnel so that you can put in the new oil uh, the oil itself we're using Castrol four stroke uh, 10W40 the manual is something different but that's what we're using you need a 12 millimeter socket for the oil drain and an eight millimeter socket for the bolts on the filter and of course your socket wrench. That's kind of handy to have. Again, the oil drain, we couldn't find our oil pan so we're using that. And some latex gloves. The latex gloves or rubber gloves are important because the oil is toxic and you don't want to have that on your skin or have it splash up on you, it's just safe to do. So, on to the oil change. Make sure the pan is placed pretty deeply underneath the bike and it covers most parts up to the where the, I'm sorry, up to where the bolt is. You want to make sure that the flow is right in the center of the pan. You don't want any splash around. So, there's the bolt. Let's see if I can poke it with this thing. There it is. Right there. Now, full disclosure, we are going to reuse the washer and the gasket on the bike. So the washer is on the oil filter bolt and the gasket is on the oil filter. And the reason for that is they're still fine. Now, if I had to do this again, I would probably order new ones. I didn't and I will for sure on the next oil change and filter change, but this time around, you can probably get away with using it at least once, but I recommend you do order or go pick up a new crush washer and a gasket for the oil change and filter change. So when you're turning the nut, just sort of loosen it up and then hand loosen it the rest of the way. And be careful, the oil will be a little bit hot, warm. there there we go so that is some dirty oil now like I said on this particular bike this is the second oil change and there's the bolt so there's the crush washer and it's still in pretty good shape so we'll use that again so let the oil drain it will take a few minutes for it all to come out and as you can see it's quite fluid which means the oil is warm if it wasn't this warm it would actually come out a little bit thicker which is why you want to turn on the bike and let it run for a bit 
to make sure that the, the oil is flowing and getting out of all the tubes and the pipes and everything in the bike. So as you can see there, the level has dropped down. Now the level really shows the true oil level when the bike is upright. Right now it's on the kickstand, it's on the side. If you have a bike stand, I recommend you use it because it's a lot simpler and safer to do, but most people don't. So this is why we did it on the kickstand because it really isn't hard to do. But with a bike stand, the rear tire is up, the bike is flat. It's much easier to get under the bike as well as making sure all the oil is draining out. So for the purpose of today, we're actually going to let this drip a bit and then we're going to lift the bike and shake it a little bit so that the oil in the pipes drain down on the bottom and then continue on out into the pan. Now one reminder, make sure that the oil fill cap is loose or off. That allows air to get in and let the oil drain. Okay, so we put on the eight millimeter socket and what we're going to do now is take out the filter cap. And the best way to take out the cap is just like on a tire on a car, go in a crisscross pattern. And I'll make sure that there's no bending or it's just the way to do it. It's what my dad taught me. So the cap is loose. There will be oil coming out from the oil filter. So make sure the pan is underneath to catch any of the drippings. And that should be it. So there's the oil filter, the gasket, and underneath the oil filter should be a spring. Let's take this out. And I'm not sure if you can see in there, but there are tiny bits of aluminum, and I'm not sure what all caught inside the threads of the oil filter so I think it's a good call to change it out there's the spring make sure that's all drained out look how black that oil is and it's only from a couple months riding so it goes to show on a new bike uh, the first couple oil changes really are the most important because that is when the bike is being broken in and a lot of the components on the inside of the bike are starting to form and you'll see a lot of that caught into the oil filter. So I'm glad I picked a new one up. So we'll put that to the side. So here's the new oil filter and the tools that we'll need to put it back on. So there's the spring, there's the old oil filter, and there's the gasket. 
Make sure that the gasket is aligned the right way. There's the new oil filter that we're putting in and the bolt as well as the bolts that went to put the cap back on. So I'll just take something here and wipe this down. Nice and clean. It's going to wipe as much oil off of the bottom of the bike as possible. What will end up happening is once the bike's all put together and you start it up, as it heats up, it will burn off the oil on the pipes and you'll see a little bit of smoke, but that's nothing to be concerned about. So there's the drain for the bike. As you can see, most of the oil has been cleaned off, not too bad. So we'll put that in. Now the manual does have torque settings for the bolt. If you have a torque wrench, uh, follow the instructions in the manual and set your torque wrench appropriately and you could use that to tighten it. We are using the tighten and then the extra half turn method which seems to work without issue. What we'll do is after the fact we'll test it with a torque wrench just to make sure it's right but 9 out of 10 times the half twist is enough at least for this oil pan part. So there you go. Tighten it hand tight and one half twist and that should be fine. So we're going to give this just a quick wipe down just to make sure it's clean of any dust or sediment that may have been in there. And you want to make sure the gasket is also clear of any sediment or dust as well. And line that up. Perfect. Now we're going to take the new filter and we're going to put it into the cap and we're actually going to prime the new filter. You don't have to do this, nor does it say this is an, an imperative thing, but what it does is it soaks the filter in oil before the bike starts so that it's already sort of mixed in there without the bike actually having to force the oil into the filter and it'll also give you a better reading of how much oil you have in the bike after the fact. So it's a step, you don't have to do it. We are simply pour it into the center and that will make its way from the inside out to the outer rims of the filter. Now it is a little messy putting back in as you'll see, but it's just a, an extra step that we do. And it's worked so far. That should be enough. By the way, my helper is Cool Dad Tony. 
he's my brother he's also a cool dad um, video maker and blogger and he does his own thing and he will be in the future making videos for cooldadreviews.com so stay tuned for information from him There, as you can see, it's a little bit messy, but not a big deal. So, just have to hold that in there and make sure that it's in right. So fast forward a little bit here to put the cap back on again crisscross motion just like a car tire and if you don't have a torque wrench and the torque settings are in the manual we do a hand tight and then a half twist and that should be enough to hold it in place. Good. Oh. And there you have it. Give that a little bit of a wipe. Nice and clean and bingo again all this oil on the pipes will smoke off so be prepared for that now to fill it up make sure you use a clean funnel and we are going to add our motor oil And that is the last of the oil. Grab the cap. And put that back on. And there. So if we take a look now at the oil gauge you'll see that there's the oil you won't really get a true sense of how much oil is in there until the bike is tilted just like that so we're good it's enough oil in the reservoir now when you turn on the bike it will go throughout the system so next time you test it it might be a little bit lower but that's okay If you need to add more, go ahead. So let's start it up. So let's tilt the bike back and we'll have to add a little bit more oil in there which we'll do in a little bit 
but there you have it that's the oil change and filter change the next part now would be to put the fairings back on we took a little bit of a break grab something to eat so we're back as you can see the oil level is exactly where it should be we did add a little bit of oil off camera and that should be good to go and now we're going to put back the lower fairing so like we showed you earlier the male and female parts sort of snap in together you have to make sure that that center hole is lined up with a metal little socket there so that the screw can thread in and it is a little bit tricky but it can be done obviously and it helps to have someone hold the fairing for you and it's cameraman I'm not doing a very good job here but looks like he's doing okay on his own so you want to make sure it is lined up perfectly Okay, we just fast forward there. It does take a little bit of finagling, but we eventually got it in. And we tucked the lower fairing into the middle fairing and put that hidden bolt back, if you recall from the beginning there. So that is done and it's tucked in away. And if you recall, that was the whole reason why we had to take out the fairing to begin with. So now if we come around to the other side on the bottom part, if you recall, there was that plastic push screw in there. We just have to tuck in that tab and snap it in and put in the push screw so that the both fairings are lined up just like that. And there's the push screw. Make sure that the center is popped out so that it could latch in. Bingo. And that's what it should look like when it's done. Like that. So that's the lower fairing. Put the screws back in. And now the lower nut, or lower bolt rather, should go in the bottom. Really, it's just the reverse order of how you took off or loosen the fairings when you first began this adventure. Now, it seems like we've been doing this a long time. Uh, the whole process took maybe an hour and a half. Uh, we were filming, of course, so that slowed us down a little bit. And there was some trial and error with taking out the lower cowling. But we seem to figure that part out. So looks like it's all working well. So that's that bottom bolt that goes in the bottom of the fairing. And we will just finish up the lower screw there. And that pretty much wraps up the oil and filter change for a 2015 or 16 Honda CBR. As you can see there, the oil level is full. Like I said, we did top it off, off camera. When you tilt the bike, it will show that the level is correct and we're ready to go. So the filter, is fine the oil levels are fine everything seems to be in place we did start it up it works so far so good now uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and you found it helpful if you have any questions or comments feel free to give us a post or drop us a line at www.cooldadreviews.com the video will also be posted there if you did find this video helpful give it a thumbs up and we will be back hopefully with another video in the very, very near future. 
But in the meantime, we've got some cleanup to do. So once again, thank you very much for watching. Until next time.